boys and girls. Do you remember last week when I said that maybe we'd have a little lesson on insects? Let's do that now. I have this book called Bugs. And this is one of the Usborne Young Beginners and I love these books because their pictures are so beautiful. Let's see. There are all different kinds of bugs. Some bugs can jump high, grasshoppers. Other bugs have lots of legs, caterpillars, centipedes. Lots of bugs have wings and they fly around. Some bugs don't have any legs or wings. A worm. Some bugs catch other bugs to eat. A spider builds a web from a sil sticky silk. A moth gets stuck in the web and the spider eats it. This is a golden orb weaver spider and a moth. Trapdoor spiders hide in burrows. The spider spots a bug and it jumps out of its burrow and grabs the bug. Bees and butterflies feed on flowers. There's a sweet juice inside flowers called nectar. They suck out nectar with their long tongues. Look at that beautiful picture. Some bugs build nests. Wood ants make big nests from twigs and grass. The ants carry the pieces one at a time. They dig long tunnels under the ground too. Young ants grow up in the tunnels. Bees make nests too. Honeybees make nests from wax. The nests have lots of little holes called cells. A queen bee lay, lays eggs in the cell. Young bees hatch out. Worker bees feed them with honey. Look at the queen bee. The queen is so much larger than the others. Some bugs look like other things. A giant leaf insect looks like a leaf. Can you see it there? It's almost like a camouflage. Stick insects look like twigs on trees. Orchid mantises look like orchid flowers. And dead leaf butterflies hide in brown leaves. Can you see the butterfly in that picture? I can see the legs. Some bugs are very big. The atlas moth is the largest flying bug. It is this size in real life. Look at that, that's bigger than my hand. Wow. Oh, and this is an atlas moth caterpillar. Some bugs sting or bite. This is a scorpion and its stinging tail. Do you remember, boys and girls, the little dish with the, um, with the samples where we had, um, I said that it was kind of like they were collected and then put in a resin, like a really hard plastic, and we look at them with a magnifying glass. Do you remember the scorpion? We can even see the stinger on that scorpion's tail. Some caterpillars have stinging spines. This stops them from being eaten. I would not want to eat something that looked that sharp and pokey. Stag beetles have big jaws. They use their jaws to fight other beetles. Slugs and snails don't have any legs. Their slimy bodies help them to slide along. Snails have shells. They can hide their bodies inside their shells. Snails and slugs eat the leaves of plants. Bugs have babies. They look after them in different ways. Wolf spiders carry their babies on their backs. Shield bugs guard their babies under their bodies. Leaf beetles lay eggs on leaves. The babies hatch out and eat the leaves. 
Ants carry their babies when they move nests. A butterfly lays eggs on a plant. A caterpillar hatches from an egg. It eats the plant. It grows bigger and bigger. Its skin turns into a hard case. What's the special word we use? What is the hard case that it, its skin turns into? A chrysalis, that's right. Its body changes inside the case. It becomes a butterfly. Some bugs live near water. Pond skaters balance on the surface of water. Great diving beetles dive underwater to catch food. Water spiders live in webs under the water. The web has air inside. The spider breathes the air and comes out to catch food. He's catching a shrimp. Other bugs grow up underwater. A dragonfly lays its eggs on a plant. Young dragonflies hatch out. They're called nymphs. They live underwater. A nymph crawls out of the water. It breaks out of its skin and becomes a dragonfly. It flies away to find food and it leaves the old skin behind. This is my favorite page. I think maybe because the colors are so beautiful. Lots of bugs come out at night. Some moths come out to find partners. Fireflies have bodies that glow in the dark. Cicadas make a chirping noise that's very loud. Most bugs can't live when it gets too cold. Some find ways to stay warm. Monarch butterflies fly to a place that has warmer weather. Snails crawl under stones to keep them warm. Young beetles live in the warm ground. In the springtime, most bugs come out again. An adult chafer beetle lives for just two weeks. Wow. Now, this lovely book was all about bugs, but are all bugs insects? Hmm. That's kind of a trick question. We often use the words bug and insects interchangeably, like they're the same thing and we can use one word or the other word. But insects are more specific. There are a few things that make an insect different than other bugs. Now let's see. Here is a big book called Discover Bugs. And there are lots of big pictures and blurbs of information. But there's a spot that I really wanted to read to you guys. Oh, and it's on this page with, look at this. See, I think maybe the other reason I like that Usborne book is because they're illustrations and not live pictures. And normally I like live pictures, but sometimes they kind of give me the creepy crawlies. This is Know Your Bugs. Not all small animals that crawl are bugs. Ah, I would like to edit this. I would like it to say, not all small bugs that crawl are insects. A spider is not an insect, and neither is a centipede. In fact, only those crawling bugs that have six legs and a body divided into three parts are called insects. Isn't that interesting? So let's see, for example, a scorpion is not an insect. And we can tell because its body is not divided into those three parts. Look at the picture of the centipede. Does it have six legs or more? many more. It is not an insect. It is a bug. Let's see if I can show you another good example. A 
perfect example. Here is a wasp. And if we look at this wasp and count its legs, now these are antenna. It has one, two, three legs on this side and one, two, three legs on this side. That made six legs in total. And it has a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Those are the three different body parts. So let's see, I brought a book to draw a picture. And maybe this will inspire you to do some drawing too. This is actually my big boy's drawing book, so I'll have to find a blank page here. All right, and I've got some markers now. The thing with drawing and the thing with art, does it have to be perfect? But do you have to try your best? Let's see. So to be a true insect, a creature has to have a body that is divided into three parts. Oh, that's too light. That's not going to show up. All right. I'll have to make this. Let's see. A head. A thorax. in an abdomen. Now normally the abdomen is the largest. And how many legs? Six legs. So one, two, three legs on this side. One, two, three legs on this side. So a body that is divided into Head, thorax, abdomen, the three body parts. And now let's give them some eyes. And what else does an insect need? I think most have little antenna. What insect do you think I made? I made an ant. Now let's see if you can do some drawing and maybe come up with different types of insects. We decided an ant is an insect and a bee or a wasp, they are all insects, and we can tell because they have a body divided into three, and one, two, three, four, five, six legs. Okay, thanks boys and girls, I'm excited to see what you come up with. Bye.